Hello! Happy Crimson Cthulhu's Day! <laughs> Here we are. Laholtzen, good to see you. Ace and Rex, happy Crimson Cthulhu's Day. Evil Tentacle, hello, good to see you as well. <laughs> Those emojis are amazing, Laholtzen. Super nice. The coffee machine, the coffee maker with the little mug. Cosmic Void 3, happy Tuesday, happy Crimson Cthulhu's Day to you too. The Lux Tux, good evening. <laughs> and Blaholson, you didn't forget it was Tuesday this week. I Tuesday is the only day I remember because every other day is exact, pretty much exactly the same to me. <laughs> Deluxe Taxi almost forgot it was Tuesday. Fair enough. Fair enough. Happy Crimson Tuesday. This week is an art stream, so we're going to work on some pixel art tonight. We're going to go back to the the old man in the woods gutting the fish. Uh, we're doing well with it, I think. It's been a little while since we we re re revisited him. But we're going to hopefully get some more work done on it. Art, 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 art. Yes, Jim plays games. Happy Crimson Tuesday. Yes. Last week, we had the return of the Dan, which was nice. Dan um, has come back and uh, or got unfired or however you want to put that. Uh, <laughs> contract renegotiation. And yeah, it was really good to just go through all the music that Dan has composed so far for the, the Crimson Diamond. And while we were doing that, he discovered a, a forgotten track he was kind of composing for Empire of Sin, like a demo track. So it was good for everybody, because I got to review and actually catalog and write down the music that we have, which I should have done, but just hadn't done before. And Dan found a piece of music that he could send to John Romero to see, hey, is this something that you might want to use for the game? So everybody won. <laughs> oh, Evil Tentacle. <laughs> Happy Crimson Coen... Coen hmm. Happy Crimson Coensday. 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 It works for almost every day, doesn't it? I was worried that there was no day of the week that that works with Crimson, but it seems like we can make every day of the week work with Crimson. Happy Crimson Cassunday. Happy Crimson Monday. Happy Crimson Tuesday. Happy Crimson Coensday. Thursday. Thursday is actually really nice. Friday and Saturday. We can do it. <laughs> Come on, day. Uh, greetings from Mika Stream. Nice. Perfect, perfect. That's really good. And Andros Phoenix 1. Andros Phoenix. I feel like I'm on bumper stumpers when I'm reading people's names sometimes. Andros, Andros Phoenix 1. Thanks for the follow. I appreciate it. Well, we're going to get started. Yes. <laughs> Friday is probably the stumbliest. I agree, Blaholtzen. Happy Crimson Friday. Wednesday is not the best either. I have to say. <laughs> the weekend days are the dodgiest. Saturday and Sunday. Cremonday? It could be Crimson Cremonday. That, that kind of almost works. Okay, I'm thinking about it too much. Um, we're gonna get started. Um... I don't have a dev update. I'm still working through uh, overhauling chapter four. I know it's been a while, but it's it's really coming along. I promise. Um, yeah. And uh, yes. Yeah, so what we're gonna do is, I guess I'll introduce myself. Um, welcome to stream. Welcome to Crimson Tuesday. I'm Julia Minamata. I'm the game dev behind the Crimson Diamond. I'm actually in front of the Crimson Diamond right now, but that's just a bad joke. And uh, I I'm working on every. Part of it on in Adventure Game Studio. I'm doing the programming and the writing and the animation and the art and all the stuff, except for the music. Uh, and it's Dan Policar on music. Yeah, that was a bad joke. Thank you, Jim Plays Games. We've got uh, Dan. Yeah, I got to do something for Dan. Slot, Slot Studio, good to see you. Cromunday sounds like Cromudgeon, which is pretty good. I, I like that. Happy Crimson Cromunday. Ronald Dragster, good to see you as well. Yes. Yeah, so those are uh, Dan's uh, links, DanTheBand.com, Twitch.tv, DanTheBandMusic, and Twitter, DanTheBand. And uh, I am I think it's going to be a music stream next week, hopefully. i got to come up with some stuff for Dan to do, because we, we reviewed all the music last week, like I said, and now I, there's really and truly no more stalling. I have to figure something out. <laughs> Curmudgeon. Happy Crimson Curmudgeon. Ooh, show a watercolor cat card, Cosmic 43 says yeah perfect so yes 
Um, a little background on the channel rewards. There are two so far. There's uh, watercolor cat cards um, that I would make for Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, things like that. So I've got a bunch of them here. Um, the nice, I think the nicest ones I've got up in the wall, like in frames. So we, we sometimes have older ones on stream. And the other channel reward is showing freelance illustration that I used to do when I was a freelance illustrator for 10 years in newspapers and magazines. Those are the two we have so far. I don't have a get back to work one yet, um, which is funny because Dan does and he gets more work done than I ever do. But we're going to do that now. And after that, we're going to run the trailer and um, I'm going to do a rock talk of the one I've been saving. Um, we've done rock talks on Lapis Lazuli, Malachite, Carnelian, um, Rubies, Rubies, and Emerald. But we have and and crimson di and, and chrome diopside. But we have not done the most obvious one, and that's the one I've been really looking forward to doing. And we're going to do that tonight. Grindislav, yes, just in time for rock talk. And speaking of Grindislav, do I ooh, do I still have Francisco's? Uh oh, do I remember? Yes, Francisco Gonzalez is in chat. Welcome, Francisco. Uh, it's Grindislav. Grindislav Games. He is working on Rosewater right now. And he made Lamplight City and a Golden Wake. And he was a guest. Fragilities, thank you for the follow. Yeah, Grindislav was a guest a couple weeks back. And we had a great time talking about, about game dev, dev and creativity in general and projects. And we asked each other what our launch dates were and we laughed and laughed and that was a, that was a great time. So thank you, Francisco, so much for being a guest. Uh, and we'll do that from time to time, I think, just to mix up the format a bit. Let me get a let me get a, a crimson cat card. <laughs> oh, Amberzine, thanks for the the subscription. Awesome, awesome, thank you. And welcome, welcome back, Amberzine, to chat. Let me just reach off of screen here. And so this is where the cards are are held, the ones that are not on the wall. Cards by Julia. Cards by Julia. So that's what that's where we're getting them from. <laughs> oh, oh Grindelstone, I'm so glad you had a ton of fun. It was so fun to have you on. Um, okay, let's find one here. Oh, you know what? This one's kind of fun. It's a bit of a different format. Okay. Fractal Mind Mike, good to see you. And before I do anything else. I'm going to give a shout out to Fractal Mind Mike, who is an amazing streamer who streams the Crimson Diamond demo. Now it must have been a month ago by now. Time flies really scarily. Um, yes, and it is fun to stream with a second person, Dave War. I totally agree. Yeah, Fractal Mind Mike. There's the shout out. Yes. Yeah, it, it was a while since Fractal Mind Mike played it, but he did a great job. Super professional. Um, sorry about opening up this photo album in front of the mic. We have here is the cat card for the channel redemption today. Okay. Happy Mother's Day. So this is a Cooper's hawk. He's got that red eye. He's a pretty big bird. He's a raptor. And we've had this Cooper's hawk visit the, the house, the backyard from time to time. And it's, it really is amazing to see a bird of this size relatively up close because I think we're all so used to seeing you know, sparrows and robins. The biggest bird that's probably common are robins and morning doves and uh, pigeons and things. But to see something of this size is really spectacular. I'm not sure if this is to scale or not. Uh, I also like putting tulips in the Mother's Day cards. So you'll see that from time to time. Oh, Jim Matt, thank you. I'm glad you liked the illustration. Yay! And this was from... Uh, it's, can you guess the bird I've painted on this card? He's definitely one we see in the backyard. I wrote to my mom. 2013. Which was eight years ago, apparently. Which is horrifying. But yeah. And there's, of course, that's Dido Cat, of course, in, in there as well. So. I don't often do them in, this, in the, the vertical format. They're usually, um, these are old ones I showed from previous previous times. I usually do them kind of this way, horizontally. I'm not sure if it's a large bird or a small cat. Um, I, wouldn't, I don't want to say both. No, yeah, I think it's a large bird and, and, and Dido is of average size. Uh, it's a Cooper's Hawk, Cosmic Void 3. 
It's a Cooper's hawk. The raptors we tend to get in, in around, around where I live are most commonly either Cooper's hawk, <clears throat> turkey vultures, or red tails. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm going to <clears throat> run the trailer and then turn the mic off so I can cough properly. I've just got a bit of a tickle in my throat. But yeah, um, I'm going to play the trailer. It's uh, The Crimson Diamond is a mystery adventure game set in Northern Ontario. And you play Nancy Maple, who is the lady behind me, um, and also in the corner. And uh, you are a rookie mineralogist. And you get sent up to Crimson Ontario, up in Northern Ontario. And I'm actually going to talk today. I'm going to show a map of vaguely where Crimson Ontario is, or where it would be. Um, and uh, you have to investigate a diamond claim. And that's why we're talking about rocks today as well, because rocks are kind of an interest of mine. They have been ever since I was a kid. And it's been really fun to be able to incorporate something I love so much already and learn more about it along the way as I was making the game. Um, but first, we're going to play the trailer. And so the game is a text parser adventure game, meaning you type in the commands to navigate through and ask people questions and open doors and open cupboards and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, and it's of this particular color palette, which we'll talk about more when we get into the pixel art part of, of the stream, um, because I do have uh, all the colors set up. And uh, there's only 16 of them, but they're the best 16 colors, and they're all you need. And the big mug of you, yes. <laughs> okay, we are going to play... Oh, I don't know if... Um, if the, the Nightbot is accurate anymore. I don't know if Lamplight City is 33% um, off anymore on Steam. Because uh, that was a timed Nightbot chat and I forgot to turn that off. Uh, but if it's not 33% off, please pay full price for Francisco's game. It, it's worth it to do that. Okay, so we're, go we're going to play the trailer. And, uh, and then after that, we're going to do the rock talk of the rock that is kind of the reason why this game is and uh, it's the biggie it's the biggie oh, <laughs> greatest uh, nope it's not 33 percent off anymore but golden wick is 75 percent off next week okay off this week so if you go to the lamplight city um steam page and you click on um the publisher or whatever, not the publisher I, would they be able to get to it from there i don't know if they would but anyway a golden wake is 75 percent off and i have bought it but i haven't played it yet i've um but buy it and play it. Okay. Okay, here we go. The trailer. Crimson Ontario was once a prosperous, lively mining town. But that was a long time ago. Now it's quiet, nearly deserted, and some folks aim to keep it that way. Nancy Maple is an aspiring mineralogist assigned to follow the trail a dazzling diamond. An intriguing cast of characters has converged under one roof, each meaning to get their own way. Or else. Will Nancy untangle the mysteries and machinations before it's too late? Will the sleepy town of Crimson shine once more? Find out in The Crimson Diamond, an upcoming adventure game by Julia Minamata. The Crimson Diamond demo is available on Steam and Itch.io for Windows PC and Mac OS. All right, and that reminds me, um, Francisco also streams. He streams on Wednesdays, on Wild West Wednesdays, and he does um, rotoscoping animations and background art and stuff like that for Rosewater. So if you're around at one o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time on Wednesdays, definitely check out Wild West Wednesdays. And Sakana Kao, good to see you. And Mouse Miss, good to see you as well. Uh, okay, so we are going to talk about, um, first we're going to do, do, do a rock talk. And what we're going to be talking about today is the rock that, I have notes. Oh, here it is. It's from, um, the name of this rock is from the ancient Greek word Adamas. Adamas meaning invincible or like implacable and that type of thing because it's of legendary toughness, the toughest, hardest mineral on earth. Rock talk, rock talk, rock talk. Um, it's diamonds we're gonna talk about today. And the game is called the Crimson Diamond. 
and I've left it for one of the later rock talks um, because what I like to do when I do a rock talk is I, I like to do a craft with the rock in question hope if I can and then talk about it with diamonds it's a little bit trickier and it has been a little bit trickier but I did manage this necklace I'm wearing right now this this is my diamond necklace and I know it looks really it's hard to see here but I have it I have photos of it all enlarged under a jeweler's loop and everything so you actually be able to see how pretty the actual stones are but this is this this I know does not look like what you would consider a traditional diamond necklace but diamond necklaces of course um, the kind that you might be used to seeing run into the thousands of dollars and um, this one cost me how much did this cost me this strand $79.71 US for this strand of of, di of chip diamonds Yes, eating with this is a pro rock and gem stream. Yes. And Nancy goes to the lodge and just talks everyone's ear off about geology the whole time. I, I try I try to to put a little bit of educational stuff in there. Um, here and there. It's not a really I wouldn't call it edutainment, but it's got a few little facts and bits of trivia, which I which I enjoy um, incorporating. But yeah, let's go to let's go to the show and tell where you will see this better close up. Um, and you can you'll be able to see um, the difficulty there. So so we're talking about diamonds now. Another thing when people think about diamonds is you think about that cartoon diamond shape, or those cut and faceted diamonds. Uh, but they of course like any other mineral, they come in many shapes and sizes. These ones you can see um, a good example of natural stones as they would occur, and of course they come in many different colors and shapes and sizes. Oh, yes. And here are, here's more examples of diamonds and yeah they have I don't know I mean yeah they are like the toughest thing ever but they still have weird scratches in them and everything like that and it might have to do with how they, they kind of brought up from the earth diamonds form in the earth's upper mantle which is about a hundred miles down 160 kilometers approximately <laughs> Dave or I think the question on everyone's mind here is can diamonds be crimson uh, I already have a whole talk prepared about diamonds, but I don't go into the colored diamonds because it was just, it would have been way longer. <laughs> yes, diamonds are just carbon that's getting a bit too big for its britches. Yeah, diamond, so, and also fractal mine, Mike, when you say diamond versus diamond, yeah, diamonds traditionally were the only things that could cut other diamonds. They would use powder diamonds and things like that, or other diamonds to kind of um, shape, uh, roughly shape other diamonds. But now they can also use lasers, which is kind of cool. But yes, uh, so diamonds form about 100 miles down, 160 kilometers down in the Earth's, Earth's upper mantle, and then volcanic eruptions will push it up, up through all the layers, um, kind of like, and, and they're called kimberlite pipes because they kind of look like a chimney, like tall and thin, and they spread out at the top. And then erosion happens after, you know, thousands and thousands of years, and because diamonds are so hard, they kind of just will get dispersed. And sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll get them, you know, along like rivers and, and glaciers and things like that. Um, but uh, there are a bunch of other minerals that also will get displaced along with diamonds. Stuff like certain kinds of garnet, um, olivine, which is kind of peridot, uh, which, is a, which is a green gem, and other types of minerals and things. So when geologists look for where would be a good place to mine diamonds, they can often look for these indicator minerals as well. Yes, diamonds have friends. Exactly, Paul Holson. Diamonds do have friends. And here are more. Here's a beautiful idea of what that variation can be like. And I think these are gorgeous. I actually like the natural shape of diamonds more than the, the faceted specimens. And uh, so when you see the, 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 the chip diamonds up close, I, I really love this because not only is it economical, but um, you get the idea of what the surface surfaces are like on a diamond more than if it's a cut and fasted uh, diamond. And are there diamonds in Canada? Which, which I guess would be the big question considering the Crimson Diamond is based in Northern Ontario. And the, and the answer is yes. Uh, there are diamond mines in Ontario and in other parts of Canada. There's one in Nunavut. In Nunavut they found gold and diamonds together in the same area, which, which is very rare apparently. And Canada has a $2.5 billion a year diamond industry diamond mining industry and we're the fifth largest producer of gold in the world which is which is which is a weird stat that I never would have imagined I'm behind China Australia Russia and the US oh first of all Mike is saying the tea is silent which tea did I say or not say none of it none of it 
Uh, okay, so um, moving on. Here are more. A oh, peridot. I don't know. I kind of always pronounce it peridot, but I don't know if that's correct. Fractal mind Mike. Is it peridot? Ooh, Grindelwald says I heard they tried to get them to pay a diamond tax up there. Interesting. Oh my God, they're having none of it. Thank you, Francisco. That's 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 dad joke number two. I appreciate I appreciate you bringing the tone of the stream up. More seriously, it, it, the, apparently the diamond industry in Canada is having a bit of trouble because um, a, so many of the diamond mines and everything are so far up north that the cost to transport materials and everything kind of ups the price per carat of the diamonds. And uh, they, they don't fetch as high price in general, uh, um, just as the, as the raw specimen as other places. You trust my pronunciation, Fractal Mind Mike? I don't know if you should. <laughs> Someone look this up. Oh, apparently both pronunciations are used, Blaholtzen says. Great. Great. And here is the strand that I bought. So that's the strand that you're seeing here, but this is how they um, appear from the website that I bought them. So they already come pre-strung, which is which is actually super convenient. And these are from a website called Fire Mountain Gems. And this strand was eight inches and it was $79.71. And they have, like you can see how tiny these are and they have tiny little holes drilled into them. And I've wanted to make this necklace for a while, but the problem was I didn't have wire of a fine enough gauge to actually go through the little tiny the little tiny holes that were drilled in these diamonds. Ah, peridot or peridot. Cosmovoid 3 says you can basically go either way. Uh, Edenway says, considering gold rushes in Alaska, I wouldn't be surprised if that there were other gold deposits along the Rockies in Canada. Yeah, there was a Yukon gold rush type of thing. Yeah, so we did kind of have one sort of on that in that same kind of area on the Canadian side. Yeah, they totally had that. Yes, Deluxe Tuck, are diamond sales not also down globally? I know my generation is getting blamed for killing the, 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 the jewelry industry. Are you a, are you a millennial? Is that, is that why you say that? Uh, but yeah, yeah, apparently diamond sales are down globally, partly because um, the, the market has been so tightly controlled and prices are artificially inflated by De Beers, which basically has a monopoly on the diamond industry, as well as the growth of um, the synthetic diamond industry, which... It's been hard for um, diamond companies have been trying to sell people on the idea that if it doesn't come from the earth, then it's not, you know, got real diamond or anything. But the synthetic diamonds, what's great about them is they don't have the same baggage that comes along with them in terms of, you know, a lot of diamonds that come from, you know, South Africa or other parts of the world. A lot of the money, it's it called blood diamonds. And I never saw the Leonardo DiCaprio movie, but I know that... A lot of that stuff um, funnels money to less desirable interests and people are, have kind of an ethical issue with that. And as well, even in Canada, where where the diamond industry does not have the same types of eth ethical issues as you might find in other parts of the world, it's still a big environmental issue. Um, and I think um, younger generations are more savvy to that and synthetic diamonds, which I think, sure, they, I'm sure they have an environmental cost in terms of the energy required to, to generate a synthetic diamond. I don't think environmentally the cost is as high, uh, at least to the environment at large, um, as, as actual natural diamonds from a pit mine, um, even from Canada. Yes, the Yukon gold rushes. Yeah, oh my gosh, even with, yeah, stringing popcorn is, is ever tricky. Try this, it was extremely tricky to string, string these diamonds because they're tiny and the holes are even tinier. Yeah, what's greater about synthetic diamonds is everything. Yeah, Dave, and the thing is, there are even other diamond um, alternatives. I have a couple um, pictures near the end of the of the rock talk, the rock talk, that I kind of show a, some, you know, you know, cubic zirconia is a popular substitute for diamonds. There's also something called moissanite or moissanite that has a lot of glittery fire and is almost as hard as diamonds are. White sapphires are sometimes used as a substitute for diamonds as well. <laughs> Ronald Dress directs to us when Dan completed all the music, will you turn him into a statue? Turn him back into a statue? Maybe. Yeah, Blaholtz, exactly. Science diamonds are really cool. I think it's amazing that they can do that. Um, so I don't have, I don't particularly have any qualms, you know, of a synthetic diamond versus a natural diamond. I think they're both amazing, really. 
Exactly, the, the deluxe tax. It's not a real diamond unless it caused mass economic collapse. Yeah, I know. Uh, there, it's just that it's it's the thing is with any almost any type of resource that you're obtaining from the earth, there's going to be some cost environmentally. Hopefully, there's not much as much of an ethical cost. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not sure how much energy it takes to, to make a synthetic diamond. I imagine it's still quite a bit. Ooh, Dave, well, you have used awesome blue sapphire in your engagement ring. It was awesome. I love. I actually prefer colored colored uh, gemstones over over diamonds. In fact. Yeah, with every with every fandom there is elitism, of course, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, so here are my diamonds that were that are on this necklace, and here they are under my loop. And I do have a Nancy Maple's trusty loop, and that's what I'm using here. I, I took uh, this loop, I put it up against my iPhone camera, and I took these pictures magnified. And so this is what they look like under that. And this is a thirty times twenty one millimeter um, jeweler's loop. And that's what that is. Another picture of it. Yeah, and they're very shimmery, and, and they're a little bit on the coarse side, so you wouldn't want to wear this. I don't think you'd want to wear this as a bracelet, for instance, because these are diamonds, and they'll probably scratch just about anything. So don't don't wear this and start rubbing your your wrists against a desk or something like that, because you're going to scratch anything. And and that's the cool thing, but also there that's a bit of a a risky thing too. So I, I think they're actually safer as either um, when they're this coarse and and they're set like this, um, either as earrings or necklaces. A white opal day of war rather than uh, in a necklace rather than a diamond. Yeah, white op opals are beautiful too. There's so many beautiful gemstones out there. There's not real any need um, to really go with a diamond. Yes, Sonneveld. Exactly. Moissanite. We do you know how to pronounce that properly? Because I'm probably not pronouncing that right. Moissanite. And her engagement and wedding rings, they look pretty good. Yeah, Moissanite has a Mohs hardness of about 9.25, I think. Which is just about as hard as a sapphire or an emerald would be. So it's extremely hardy as well. And it's colorless. And they say that it's got um, better fire than a diamond does. So it actually will will disperse light and uh, break up light better than a diamond actually does. And it's at a fraction of the price. So if you guys don't know um, Moissanite, look it up for sure. It's a gorgeous stone. Oh, son of Hulda, I think you're pronouncing it the way the way you would. Okay, that's good. I'm, I'm I, <laughs> I feel good about that. I, it's one of those things. I and I don't ever think think poorly of anyone who mispronounces a word that they know how to use properly. Um, Terry Pratchett has a whole thing about this where he says it only just means that you've read more than you've s talked, I guess, or listened maybe even. And even he pronounced when he first um, saw the word ogre, he thought it was pronounced ogre. And, and so if, the, if Terry Pratchett can cop to something like that, I think it's fair enough for the rest of us. Just more gorgeous pictures. So, so mine um, are, are a variation of um, kind of gray and also some more colorless ones. And here are, you can see here when it's all under the loop in a pile, you can see the little, little holes in it. And it's such that when I was trying to string these on the 30 gauge wire, I was I had to do it by feel actually because I was trying to use the loop and trying to poke the wire in, but because of how irregularly shaped these diamonds are, it's 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 very very difficult to find the little hole if you're looking at them. So I just would start poking at them until it started to thread through the wire, and then I would just thread it the rest of the way. Oh, Dave, we're asked is disperse disperse this this word that mean that means act like a prism. I think prisms refract light. But I, I can't remember what it means, um, what, that fire of a diamond. I don't know if, I don't think that's refraction necessarily, but I don't don't remember the, the actual term. And that's, yeah, so that's give you the, the idea of the scale. Those are my fingers and I've got, I don't have huge fingers and, and that's how tiny they are, really small. And I put them on um, this kind of like a shoe polishing cloth because each one of these is, is worth, you know, almost a dollar maybe or something. So. I don't remember how many, I didn't count how many there are here, but yeah, um, I didn't want to lose any of them. Small, very small. Deluxe Tux, you just scrolled update earlier this year, you decided to read the series, you're on book 17, so you're almost halfway there. Yeah, I really, Terry Pratchett books are amazing. I, I am so glad that I discovered them, and uh, I do go back to reread them. And, and if you like Discworld, you might also like the Tiffany Aching series, which is also written by Terry Pratchett. Art Burklaus, good evening, good to see you. 
And here are, I kind of, I was trying to separate the colors of the, the diamonds in my strand between gray and more colorless. And here, are, here's another close up. I can't believe, I don't know what they're using. They must have used lasers or something to, to drill little holes in these things. Yeah, Art Bakelites, we're doing a rock talk about diamonds today. These are the diamonds that I have that I'm actually wearing on this necklace um, that I've got strung around my neck. I, or, or I ordered these diamonds. Um, all of these diamonds cost about $80 US, which is not cheap, but considering they're diamonds, it's my diamond necklace. Um, I'm, I'm kind of cool with that. And I did want to own a piece of diamond jewelry because Crimson Diamond and all that. Ooh, top five Terry Pratchett books so far out of the 17. Deluxe Tux is saying, Man at Arms, Mort, which is abroad, Interesting Times, and Moving Pictures. Yeah, Interesting Times is definitely one of my top five. I really like Mort as well. I've, re I've reread those fairly recently. Mort is excellent. Really good. I, I still remember the, the beginning of that is so strong and how, how, how Mort goes to basically like a job fair or something. <laughs> and here are the more colorless ones after I sorted them for color. So that's the first set. I've got another little uh, little diamond thing here. Oh, I'm sorry for the duplication. So here is the necklace that I have um, around my neck right now. And it's time to do... Wait a second. Oh, time is two. I can make this any bigger. So that's what that is, and it's got sort of like a gold-plated brass chain that I've linked on to the thirty to the thirty gauge wire. Yeah, Mouse, it's interesting to pair diamonds with gold. Is that not not the usual thing to do with diamonds and gold? I don't know. <laughs> I could have done a silver chain as well, but I thought I thought that um, I guess that platinum and diamonds more potentially. But uh, yeah, I'm not 100% happy with the chain that I've got on this, so I could easily swap this out for a, a silver chain. It's got to be fancy. Yes, yeah, super fancy. And yeah, here is um, one of the maps that I have. This will show you, this shows basically some of the diamond mines in Ontario. So you can see at the very bottom here, we have Toronto is the marker down here. The De Beers Victor mine is, is further north, way further north. Um, this is James Bay, this body of water here, and there's actually, it's actually connected to the larger bay, which is Hudson's Bay. But this is James Bay, this is Lake Superior, and this Victor Mine Aerodrome, I don't actually know what this is. I guess there has to be some mining up here as well. But yeah, that's how far north we're talking. And so when, when I was setting the Crimson Diamond, I was imagining this whole area up here, which is called... This, the James Bay Lowlands, and so this because this is James Bay, James Bay Lowlands is here. I imagine the Crimson Diamond would be happening somewhere in this vague area up here. Yes, platinum would be even fancier. Um, yeah, I don't like it's. I make kind of like craft jewelry, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't uh, do that to a, a platinum chain, or even a gold, an actual you know fourteen karat gold chain. Oh, you can't see the mouse cursor. Okay, um, I. I don't know how to fix that, but anyway, you can kind of see um, between the Victor Mine Aerodrome, the, Vic the De Beers Canada Victor Mine, and the largest body of water um, to the to the left of the Victor Mine is Lake Superior. So that triangulated area between the lake, the Victor Mine, and the Victor Mine Aerodrome, that's kind of the vague area. Anything between James Bay, which is in the upper middle, um, the upper middle bottle of body of water, the largest one. And 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 Lake Superior. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you for 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 saying that Art Brooklyn. I will be mindful of that. BS Squad Leader, good to see you. Welcome to chat. Who is James James from James Bay? I don't know who James from James Bay is. I actually never thought about it. I never even thought of it as a name. I just thought of it as a name of a of a place. The Canadian Roy, good to see you. the the Canadian Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, it's just it's just vaguely that area. And so, um, speaking of. Um, the Victor Mine. So the Victor Mine was September 2020. They found a flawless 102 carat diamond there. And this next map here that I've got, this shows the extent of the Canadian Shield, the purple. And the Canadian Shield is a very 
old um, geographic geologic formation and you find this type of geologic formation this rock hard rock formation in other parts of the world all the world's kimberlite diamond deposits are situated in ancient shield areas and that includes the kimberlite deposits in africa in australia in russia south america and north america so for decades they assumed that there were there would be diamonds in the canadian shield but they had they weren't found until 1991. Oh, interesting. Thank you, Deluxe Tux. And thank you, Wikipedia. This southerly bay was named in honor of Thomas James, a Welsh, Welsh captain who explored the area more thoroughly in 1630 and 1631. So James is actually Thomas. Yeah. So yes, it's Thomas James. He had two, two first names. But yes, so we see um, in in the middle of the map where it says Canada and then to the to the right of that you see Hudson Bay Hudson Bay the other kind of bay that that's at the bottom of that is James Bay and that whole this whole extent of that purple is potential diamond areas and they have had they have opened and operated diamond mines in none of it in Quebec and in in northern Ontario as well and this I've mentioned her in another, in an old Crimson Gazette issue. This is Ira Thomas. She's a Canadian lady geologist and she was profiled in the New Yorker. And I kind of like it because she does remind me a heck of a lot of Nancy Maple with kind of her, sh her, her short red hair and, and everything like that. She discovered and opened viable diamond mines in the Northwest Territories and in Quebec. She, has a U she went to U of T, University of Toronto, and she has a Bachelor of Science in Geology. She's the president and CEO and co-founder of Lucera Diamond Corps, and she's known as the Queen of Diamonds. So that was that was fun for me to discover. And the article, if you find the article on Ira Thomas, it's E I R A Thomas. Uh, in the New Yorker, it's fascinating um, how how they kind of went about went about all that and establishing all that stuff. Yes, and VA squad leader. It's not her EGA red face. <laughs> it's so fun to find little little tidbits like this and being, being able to to learn more about. So the research that I, 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 I do to learn more about the setting and possible story bits uh, for the game are just stuff I'd want to learn anyway. <laughs> Dear boy, you wish your title was Queen of Diamonds. That's rad. Apparently, um, she was voted... Um, by some mining magazine, like their man of the year, because they didn't have a title, they didn't have it as, as person of the year. So she was the, the man of the year for some mining magazine, which I thought was really cool. This, oh wow, it's so big, I, I, I kind of need to resize this. This, it's kind of hard to tell. This was the largest diamond ever found. This was found in South Africa in 1905. It was 1.36 pounds or 621.35 grams. It was 3,106.75 carats. And it was the Kulinin diamond, named after Sir Thomas Kulinin, who owned the mine and who so happened to be tour having a tour of the mine the very day it was discovered. Here is the Kulinin one, which was one of the l nine large diamonds that was cut from the Kulinin. This 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 is a huge hunk of diamond. This is what it looks like when it was cut. They cut nine major gems and ninety six smaller gems, and the f most famous uses for these diamonds. You can see the Kulinin one, the one that was in this previous picture, is in the scepter. This um, the British monarch monarch scepter, king scepter. And on the left is another Kulinin diamond, which is in um, Queen Elizabeth II's crown. Yeah, Eden with it's funny you say, sure, that isn't a hunk of broken glass, because when it was found in the mine, when the Kulinin was found in the mine, they thought it was a piece of natural glass because it was so big. They could not have conceived that it was an actual diamond. Yes, I know. Um, <laughs> Deluxe likes. Imagine being the person who cut the cut the diamond. Yeah, the person who cut the diamond. It took two tries to cleave this thing. Um, the first, the first, the first cleave, and it must have been some yeah real <laughs> nerve wracking experience. Just to cut any gemstone, precious gemstone, it must be extremely stressful. And I, I think I've I've actually read an article where um, they I think they might even have short careers because of just the high 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 levels of stress. 
So the queen paid for that diamond via Esquire later. What's interesting about the Kulinin, and I think on, with a lot of these things, and I, it was actually bought by the South African government, the Kulinin was. And then it was given as a gift to King, I think it was King George at the time, um, which is which is unusual. I don't know. I guess I understand the the power dynamics between giving a royal a, a, a member of royalty something that precious because certainly they could afford it but to give it as a gift it almost feels then that they have an obligation to do something for you or something I don't know how that works I don't know anything about how, how any of that operates but yes the Kulinin was purchased by the South African government and gifted to King possibly George <laughs> Therefore, you've cut gems. It was pretty stressful. That's amazing that you've cut them. Yeah, our book close. Yeah, so that's how it got it got it got into the hands of the British royalty. Um, it was given to them. Yeah, exactly. The more the richer you are, the more free stuff you get. <laughs> Should have just got them a gift card. I know. But I think maybe part of it was that they would have the resources to to get them cut properly maybe or polished up or I don't know what anyway it was it was a freebie <laughs> um, the Kulinin one which is the one in the scepter which is this one is esti estimated to be worth 400 million dollars and it is considered the world's largest colorless diamond so that's that I know, Nightbot, I'm sorry, Francisco. It's giving incorrect information. Um, I forgot to, to change that. But I, even, I, I encourage people to, um, to, buy, to buy a Lamplight City if you haven't already. Maybe I'll turn it off um, after I finish doing the diamond talk, possibly. And I've got a few other unusual diamonds, or diamonds of note. This one is the Matryoshka diamond which I'm certain I didn't pronounce properly, but uh, it was found in October 2019. It's, it's not that big, it's 0 0.62 carats, but what's interesting about it, there's a diamond within a diamond, which is the first time this has ever happened that they've discovered. There's a six millimeter cubed um, cavity on the inside of this diamond. On the inside, there's a diamond that's 0 0.02 carats. And I guess it just kind of rattles away inside. This is really cool. This is also a fairly recent discovery. This is 20, 2004. Uh, this is a, a white dwarf that is 90% pure diamond. It, uh, it is 4,000 kilometers in diameter, which is larger than our moon. It is called the V886 Centauri or the BPM 37093. And they've determined through the star's frequency spectrum that it is 90% diamond. It would sparkle. <laughs> it's so bright that it can be seen 50 light years away. Yeah, the, I know, the artist depiction is pretty funny. Oh, it's Matryoshka. Matryoshka for the other diamond. Yes, diamonds from space mass. That's exactly. Yeah, it's a great infographic, isn't it? <laughs> So a 4,000 kilometer in diameter diamond, it's named Lucy after the Beatles song, which is kind of fun. And it is a hun, it is 10 billion trillion trillion carats of diamond. And I'm sure De Beers does not want to see this thing um, mined, potentially. Yeah, diamond in a diamond, <laughs> yeah. 10 billion trillion trillion carats of diamond are just floating in space. I'd like to think that it looks like a disco ball. It's, it's, it's dazzling. Yes, De Beers would blow it up. B-Squad leader. I'm sure they would. I'm sure they would. And here's another um, awesome infographic of Lucy in the sky. This one is um, the size comparison of this giant diamond white dwarf versus the earth versus the moon. It's it's wonderful. It's in fact I know that um there are other like um, planetoid type of objects that have other types of um of precious metals or gems and things like that. Oh, De Beers is already trying to lay claim, eating with interesting. 
Ooh, there's an adventure game for the situation. Wow. Irony curtain from Matryoshka with love. From Okay, from Matryoshka with love. And this, um, oh, we're speaking about, so this is, this is where we start talking about the industrial and otherwise um, applications for diamonds. And I said that this is, you know, one kind of a diamond. This diamond necklace is one of the kind of diamonds that I possess. But I also have this. This uh, is a diamond encrusted um, file. And this is one of the, this is, this would be considered a, a cosmetic application, but it's usually a, um, an industrial application of using diamonds as an abrasive. And uh, apparently a lot of um, abra industrial applications of, uh, of diamonds are now synthetic diamonds, but occasionally you still get natural diamonds. So this is my, my file and it's excellent. And you have a diamond tip screwdriver. Marisim is cool. You have a diamond file on your Leatherman B Squad leader. That's cool. Ha! Evil Tentacle. Will the, will the Crimson Diamond 2 be about Nancy Maple being sent into space to investigate a 90% diamond planet? That'd be awesome. Are oh, you joking about De Beers? Okay, anyways. Never heard of this planet thing until now. Yeah, I'm not even. Yeah, this is a foot file. Like, there's no dancing around this, okay? This is my foot file for my, my calluses <laughs> and stuff. But it is beautiful. Like, look at its sparkle. And it's super hardy um, and wonderful. Here are some diamond tipped uh, drill bits. Yes, exactly, Diavor. Um, there are diamond saw blades. I've actually got a picture of diamond saw blades also in this. Nancy in space. And here is another drill bit. Like a, this is more of an industrial drill bit, which is kind of amazing to see. And yes, this is a, a diamond blade. And you can see around the edge of that, there's some speckles, and that's where the diamonds are. And here's a close-up of a diamond saw blade, where you can see the little chunks here and there, which is kind of wonderful. Yeah, diesel punk space adventure. <laughs> Put the file into a manila folder because files go into folders. It's wonderful. This is this is this is wonderful. It wasn't cheap compared to compared to any other types of this type of thing, but. It'll hopefully last forever. This is just another example of something else diamonds can do that not many people know about. Diamonds can fluoresce, although I checked today and apparently 15 to 20% of diamonds will fluoresce when put under ultraviolet light. Not all of them will though. So you can't really use it to determine whether or not you have a diamond, but it can be used to verify if it is a diamond. But if it doesn't fluoresce, doesn't mean that it necessarily isn't. Yeah, so that's kind of nice. Uh, and yes, we talked about a little bit about alternatives to diamonds. So we have white sapphire on the far left. In the middle, we have got moissanite. And on the right, we have diamonds. They're all pretty good. I mean, through the ages, there have been others. Of course, glass, cubic zirconia, um, paste. Old glass. Yeah, yeah. Um, they have that radium, that radium glassware that will fluoresce. But I don't, I don't know otherwise why, why some diamonds do that and why others don't. And here's a picture I actually took uh, in the British Museum of their, their um, display of diamonds that fluoresce. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know why some diamonds do, why 15 to 20 percent of diamonds do or not. But this was wonderful because you can see there's diamonds of every color here and yeah, some of them are glowing quite brightly. And that's that. That, that is the diamond um, the diamond talk. Although, I'm going to take a look at my notes and see if there's anything else that I've missed. Yeah, the old radioactive glassware. And also, um, they would use radium paint on watch faces and things. And uh, that was an issue because the, the people who would paint the, the, the glow-in-the-dark parts on a watch face would lick the tip of their brush to keep a point and they were poisoning themselves. Let's see. Oh yeah, another one was uh, another cool factoid is India was the earliest source of diamonds. Uh, the Golconda field was worked as early as 800 BC. 
That was the, one of the earliest diamond mines, 800 BC in India. Synthetic diamonds have been produced commercially since 1960. And that's about it, I think. That, that is all the extent of what I have um, for talking about diamonds, the rock talk. Yes, the Radium Girls B-Squad leader. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there is a there's a long um, a long and sad history of artists kind of poisoning themselves with their art materials. A lead-based paint, chromium-based paint, cadmium-based paint. All the heavy metal paints that were really, really good paint were also super duper toxic. The Rock Talk rocked. Thank you, Davor. And that's that. Um, back to me. Yes, yeah, so this. Yeah, that is. In fact, let me see if I can just take this off and wave it in front of you. Crit, crit Rocket Runner, good to see you. Good evening. Oop. That's never going to want to focus, is it? On something that close. No. Anyway. That is... That is the... I turned off autofocus somewhere, so hopefully it's a little bit better today. But yes. That is um, the rock talk. That is the diamond talk. Of course, we could have gone. We could have gone on for much longer about that because yeah, we didn't talk about colored diamonds. We didn't talk about really the mi specifics about how the mining works. Um, but uh, the the pit mines for diamonds um, look really scary. Some of them can be seen from space, and uh, environmentally, they're not obviously not that great. <laughs> yes. Mad Hatters for Mercury and Curie with the radioactive rocks. Um, yes, there, there's a, a lot of things are super poisonous. So, you know, we talk, the people have that theory about Napoleon with his uh, wallpaper. They thought maybe the arsenic, there's arsenic in his wallpaper. Green wallpaper had arsenic in it as a pigment. Yes. Oh, nice. Dave, well, you finished cooking Tuesday just in time for pixels. Yes, we're going to get started on the pixel stuff now. Um, and I should put the music back on. Great. And Photoshop is, is is eight. Yes, there we go. Great. So now we're gonna get into the pixel art. And I mentioned, yeah, this EGA palette, this glorious sixteen color palette, is right here. And I like to organize them like this, in sort of like a light and dark section. And we've been working on this little thing. And uh, just to give an example of the progress we've made so far. Yeah. So we started, we started to build up, move things around. Uh, B Squad Leader's asking, is this for chapter two? No, this is not for chapter two. This is for um, the introductory sequence for the game, which is still very much placeholder art and I've been trying to slowly upgrade it on stream and it's been going very slowly but we're getting there slowly I'm gonna keep saying the word slowly because that's what that's how that's what it's been slowly and that's where we are now how much work do I think is left in this scene Good question. Um, it could. Well, I want to add some 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 shadow um, behind these rocks. Then we need to work on the shadow uh, in the rest of the scene and some dithering. Hmm. You got to try the Commodore 64 palette day of war, and it, it's close to EGA. I guess it's a little more subdued. Can I zoom in on the rocks? Absolutely. That's where we're at right now. I kind of added a bit of stuff, hand dithering. Militant Brailler, good to see you. <laughs> you solved it, it was the ocean meat sandwich game over next. 
C64 is a great palette. Yeah, swapped a pink for a brown, cyan for a gray, desaturated. There is something appealing about desaturated color. I just, I gravitate toward the bright stuff and I don't know why. But yeah, so why don't we start a new, a, a new layer. Um, I think we might be moving into dithering soon. Although, I might want to just put some finishing touches on on the um, the fisherman. Lost train, dude. Good to see you. Oh, I'm glad you. I'm glad you can see progress and I can appreciate the progress. Because sometimes it's hard for me to appreciate the progress on here. Yeah, we're gonna work on this a little bit. Oh, wow. Yeah, what happened to the... The magic wand tool doesn't do the same thing anymore, does it? What's, what's going on? Oh my gosh. Ooh. Oh, is it a... Okay, um, anyone who knows uh, Adobe Creative Suite, Creative Cloud, how do I... How can I make... How can I make the wand tool work like it's supposed to work? What's going on? Okay, it's good. I've got it. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Oh, cool. Deluxe Talks. Last train dude with the, with the Kickstarter. Yeah, link it. Please link the Kickstarter. Please link the Kickstarter. I'm going to try to just add some... Because I realized after seeing this that I want to add some just some shadow cast by the stones a little bit. And then that'll be that for that. Hey Bumblebee Bat, welcome to stream. Yeah, I'm the solo dev of this game. I've got um, Dan the Band music is working on the music, but that's about it. I'm doing everything else. <laughs> oh, whoops. Opac op op opacity. Opacity. Wasn't right. So that's kind of, I guess, why everything takes forever. Um, solo game dev all that oh thank you oh hold on just wanna bumblebee bat thank you for the follow I appreciate that um, yeah uh, just and it's just a matter of um, you know <laughs> same thing anyone can say you know covid etc huh <laughs> All the same reasons everybody else has for anything. It'll it'll get done eventually. I can't I can't say when, but it will happen at some point. Oh, there it is. Perfect. Thank you. Stuck in Stuck in Attic near Mage. That that campaign is going gangbusters, Lost Train Dude. Yeah, absolutely. So please back. Lost Train Dude is a fellow AGS game dev. I actually met him at Adventure X. Really super cool. And uh, yeah, the project looks amazing. If you love adventure games, check it. Definitely check it out. Yeah, see for AGS, the Lost Train Dude, I didn't check, but is a Near Mage, is that also an AGS game? Okay, so it's Unity. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, you read my mind. Oh, Bum Bumblebee Bat wants to know, after Crimson Diamond, do you plan to go into the Super VGA art style? You waiting for Lower Bow 3? 
I don't know about VGA, you guys. I like EGA so much. I sometimes say if I was going to do another... When I, I, I do have another an idea for the next Nancy Maple game. Um, and I want to play with other palettes. Uh, but whenever I think about playing with other palettes, I think of fewer colors, not more colors. I think how much fun it would be to do something in CGA or do something in black and white. Um, which I am doing with um, with the Playdate game that I'm, I'm art directing. I got to do black and white art, which I got I got super excited about. And for Space Warlord Oregon Trading Simulator, I also got to got to do kind of black and white art, well, black and green art in that in that case, and it was so much fun. Um, so I I don't imagine I don't imagine that I would do Super VGA because then I'd have to paint the backgrounds and everything and scan them. Which, which could be cool, but I'm, I'm really not that much of a... I'm not much of a, of a painter, actually. I do want to get better at that. But how cool would it be to have painted backgrounds? Uh, BS Squad Leader. So if uh, you haven't played it yet, should you keep waiting or play the first chapter? No. <laughs> um, BS Squad Leader, I recommend um, playing the first chapter, um, which is the demo. Because I don't, I don't know when this will be done. <laughs> and the first chapter, it, it um, it's pretty basic. It's a good introduction to the game, I think. Um, but yeah, yeah, I would, I would say that because I, I, it's not gonna. Don't think it's gonna be this year. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Oh yes, Bumblebee Bat. I love black and white for horror. I'm um, speaking of horror. World of Horror, which is a black and white horror game, is a lot of fun. Um, it's by, published by Yisbred Games. It's really, really, really cool. I love that one bit style. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been doing a one bit style for um, for the Playdate game for Recommendation Dog. <clears throat> it's so much fun. In fact. Yes, the and Blahot and yeah, the art is so good. Return of the Oberdin, also black and white pixel art, gorgeous. Hmm. For a one time, you hired an art professor to make Cthulhu monster images. He painted them in oil and scanned them in. That's <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> Do I have? I have. Um. I wish I had. No, that doesn't do anything. Um, I had something for Space Warlord. No, that wasn't it either. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> Space Warlord Oregon Trading Simulator. I did portraits for that, and that, that was a lot of fun. That's not bad. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Oh yes, and yeah, a world of um, world of horror has that same um, option of different retro color schemes, same as the Return of the Oberdin. I love one bit color, so good. Yeah, I don't know. That's what excites me. Anything lower resolution than three twenty by two hundred or fewer colors, I, that's what gets me excited. I, I, I'm not that interested in do, doing super high resolution VGA super VGA stuff. The limitations are, are what are exciting to me. I'm also pretty indecisive. Yeah, Blah Holtzen. Yeah, you agree too. Yeah, absolutely. CGA would be fun. Even another limitation would be, you know, the lower resolution, like um. Like an a like an a CR AGI game like Gold Rush or something having those double wide pixels and trying to make something look good like the Manhunter games from CR as well were AGI really good looking games I would I would love to do a small game in AGI I would love to do a small CGA game I'd love to do all that kind of thing Hey Static Bolter welcome to chat Do you use a mouse or a tablet stylus I'm using a Wacom so that's what I'm using right now. 
I'm using a Wacom. I'm using a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro, which is kind of like a Cintiq, but it's actually the whole unit is um, a computer. In fact, I can just hold on. Um, give me a second here. I will show you the setup here. So this is the Wacom Mobile Studio 16. Um, and it's actually a computer and, and everything, which is great for portability. That's what I'm using right now. I also sometimes use an iPad for pixel art. <clears throat> so I have got, I've, got an I, I've got an eye pencil and, a, and an iPad too. And that form factor is really nice. I mean, if I'm... You know, if I'm going to be on an airplane or something and I want to do some pixel art work, I can do that. But um, for, you know, using Adventure Game Studio and Photoshop, things like that, I, um, I am uh, using uh, the Wacom Mobile Studio and also using the Wacom Mobile Studio for art as well. And Day of War, no, I do not have a second monitor. Um, I just have the iPad for playing, like I'll watch something on the iPad or half watch it while I'm doing work. AGI was always your favorite mouse mouse? I love AGI. I want I so much want to do that use that style. Okay back to Photoshop. <clears throat> Shift eight again. Yeah. It's so appealing. Ah uh, B squad leader. B yeah B squad leader. You have an XP Pen 24 Pro and a Samsung Tab S6 Lite for drawing. Nice. I love hearing people's setups. I'm actually going to write that down. XP Pen 24 Pro and a Samsung Tab S6 Lite for drawing. My um, The machine I had before this... <coughs> excuse me. That I still have is a, a Microsoft Surface Pro 2, which I, I will never say enough about. I love that machine so much. Um, only drawback was it was it's got a tiny screen, it's like a 10 inch diagonal screen, 10.3 inch diagonal screen, I think. But it had it uses uh, Wacom drivers, and you could use Wacom styluses with it, so it was fantastic. And it had a really nice, um, really nice uh, drivers and things. So. But the only drawback for that for me for that was it was eight years old and it's starting to show that age. And that's why I upgraded. Ah, oh, Bumblebee Bat. Fewer colors does force the artist to be more creative. Pixel count limitations you don't like so much. Um to a point, yeah, to a point it gets to be too restrictive, I think. Um but uh for for um for um portraits and in, in little inventory things, I actually kind of like it. I'll show these. These were for Space Warlord Oregon Trading Simulator. These are some character portraits, and these were fifty by fifty portraits. And I really enjoy the limitation of trying to get tone into them at that resolution. And it's kind of they start breaking up a bit maybe when they're larger, but when they're when they're minimized, um, they start to resolve into better tone, which I love that challenge. And I think um, for this type of thing, fifty by fifty is probably the smallest I would go, potentially. Um, it becomes a real trick to try to achieve certain effects when you're just wrestling and fighting with the resolution that you're at. <laughs> Wake up drivers and nice in the same sentence. Oh, Grindelwald is in the in the second monitor crew, is he? Who the, I've heard good things about the Horions B Squad leader. Um, I just wanted something that was, um, because the this the, my problem was I was spoiled with the Microsoft Surface Pro two. The Microsoft Surface Pro two was a a tablet. I, it was a tablet PC, I guess, but it was a full featured PC. That was also a Wacom tablet, and I didn't want to settle for anything less than that in, in my current setup. Um, so that's why uh, Wacom, the Wacom Mobile Studio, was for me a, my good choice. Ah, 
Ah, B Squad Leader, interesting. Surface Pro 2 are pretty great. Not quite powerful enough for Windows. I wonder if you installed Linux on them, you could get more life out of them. But very potentially, B Squad Leader. And um, I still use, you know, I can still use the Surface Pro 2. It's got um, the Adobe Photoshop uh, CS2 on it, which runs fine. And it can do everything. It just, my problem was when I was starting to do streaming, it was really suffering at that point. Yeah, 50 by 50 Day of War was challenging, but I loved the challenge of doing that. I think the fire is looking pretty good. I'm going to leave that for now, and then I'm just going to start touching up other little areas. And we're going to get into this, back to this guy, I think. Because um, actually, just looking at this, this part here was starting to bother me a little bit. Oh yes, Gundislav, I heard about Pure Ref, which is a way to kind of wallpaper um, a monitor with all your references. I, d I would do that on my own in Photoshop, but I hear great things about Pure Ref, so I'm glad you tried it. Oh, B Squad Lee, you like the Cintiqs as well? For 15 years you do the Cintiqs. Before I was working with the Surface Pro 2, I was using the Intuos 4, or the Intuos 2 for in, in college. And um, I really like that. I know some people, they're not big on the Cintiq because it makes their hand warm, like the under the palm and stuff. But I know most people speak very highly of the Cintiqs. And I, yeah, I have a lot of artist friends who have Cintiqs. <laughs> oh, Bumblebee, Bat, I'm glad you like the 50 by 50 portraits. The first Gen Sierra games where the pixels are huge. You don't like the, those are the AGI ones. You're not you're not big on that. <laughs> uh, I guess it's a, it's definitely a taste thing for sure. Deluxe Talks wants to know what sort of direction did you get for the portraits? Was it specific or quite open ended? Um, I think I w they were very open ended. They were very open-ended. I'm just trying to think... I'm trying to think of what the specs were for those. Um, I think... I think for the the upper right here, the spec was something of like board... board and something else. And uh, the bottom right was relaxed or something. It was, they were very vague, actually. Which was which is kind of excellent. Um, they weren't like chill seal or doggo like how they are here. They they were, Zalavir gave me a lot of um, a lot of uh, free reign with them, which was fun. So so they weren't like oh we want a middle manager looking guy with with you know an obsequious obsequious smile that's got a hammerhead shark face and a grin and he's got he looks like Dwight Schrute if Dwight Schrute was a hammerhead shark alien they, no it was not that specific <laughs> I didn't know that's what um, Terry Pratchett was a fan of multiple screen setup lost train dude why six screens because I haven't got enough room for eight is what Terry Pratchett said when I was in college, I had a roommate who had nine, nine monitors. It was amazing. It looked like an air traffic controller room or something. Or no, a broadcast, a broadcast room, one of those broadcast studios. It was great. He, he built himself a special desk for, for, for all his desks. I mean, um, for his um, monitors. It was great. Ooh, the Graphire 2 B Squad Leader. Yeah, my first one was Intuos 2, and I used it and used it and used it. Um, and then I got the Intuos 4, which I actually didn't end up using that much, but I got a really good deal on it. Um, sometimes you can get good deals on on these things if, um, if you find like uh, an animation studio or something that's going out of business or something. That's how I got my Intuos 4 for 250 bucks. I saw on... Um, I saw on Facebook, no, I saw on Twitter or something, someone was saying downtown Toronto, there was an animation studio going out of business and they were, had a, a lot of Intuos 4s and stuff available, so I bought, I bought a used one from that. 
<laughs> Black Holson, you like the pleasant warmth, warmth of a Cintiq? Maybe the big ones are hotter. Oh, B Squad Leader says the old ones are hotter after eight hours a day. Okay. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Dr. Wine Mike. I'm glad you like the work. My friend had 12 screens. The most you had was four. <laughs> Nine monitors, that's what I call a screensaver. Yeah, I... I like having the one. Let's do, let's do a little bit of, um... Of shadow in here for the firelight. Let me see what that was. <clears throat> oh, Static Bolter, thanks for the follow. And of course, because of this hard-coded um, Photoshop thing, I've been using my my, um, my brushes at not 100% opacity, which is great. There's nothing that can be done about that. <laughs> yeah, just play tic-tac-toe on the screens or just have have ones that are just playing the matrix the green matrix glyphs flowing down the screens I'm pretty pleased with that I think we're going to go back into the dude a little bit and then we're going to work on some dithering <clears throat> hmm Fractal Mind Mike uses three. Yeah, I think multiple screens is really good for streaming. <clears throat> oh wow, you connect to your CRT TV, HM, HDMI downscaler, and you watch 80s and 90s cartoons. What, what 80s and 90s cartoons do you watch, Fractal Mind Mike? That's awesome. So let's, let's fix this guy a bit. Because his head really does look big in proportion to everything else. So we might have to do something about that. And just make it smaller. We can make his face smaller in an easy way by just making his face hairier, maybe. And then trimming out into here. Three is best, one primary and two sidekicks. DuckTales, the real Ghostbusters, nice. Yeah, um, what are people playing on... What, what, what are you guys playing on these multiple monitors? If you have... Because two I understand, because two would be, okay, well, I've got a show on one, and then the other one is the work one, but what about people with the four and the five and the six? And, how does that work? Is One, I guess, would be some people just have their, their Photoshop tool tools on one or how does this work <laughs> V squad leader so you did do that but back in the 90s 1999 when the matrix came out you had two CRT monitors put the matrix screen series on them you thought it was the coolest thing it was come on it is cool it is cool I just Discord Blaholson. You just use a Cintiq as a second screen. Two for work is pretty common. Okay, like web browser and code. Okay, yes, got it. Got it. Nine monitors, but they also the same thing. Yeah, I, I yeah. I like being able to focus. Yeah, we're just gonna shave this guy's head down a little bit and make it look not as big, because I feel like it is really big. I need to do something about that. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is going already. It's not even been an hour. Oh, art and references, that too. 
It's funny because for the longest time I was working on the Surface Pro 2 and that was my only screen and it was like I said 10.3 inches um, on the diagonal so it was tiny it was tiny but I guess I'm just, now I've got the screen that's much larger and, and I feel like this is good too this is good enough I guess my eyes are still pretty good so that helps Although I did get the lasers in my eyes, so it's not like they're naturally good eyes. Lasers can cut diamonds and also make make vision good. Lasers are the best. They solve all the problems. Pascal LaRue, good to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> all the fishing knowledge is inflating his brain. <laughs> oh, Blaholtz and your vision is deteriorating? Well, they do have lasers for that. They have lasers for every every problem. <clears throat> okay, yeah, my problem was the distance seeing. I was uh, what was that far sighted? I can never remember if if you can see far. If you can't see far, is that near sighted or far sighted? Oh, that's actually better, just like that. Cats love lasers. Yes, they do. He's, everyone loves lasers. Ooh, Bumblebee bat on smartphones is what you blame your vision on. Went downhill fast when you got your phone. Well, my, my, my eyes have started going downhill in about grade three or four, I'd say. Um, so I can't, I, I can't blame the smartphones, unfortunately. Uh, Jim, Matt's nearsighted. Nearsighted means can't see distance well. Okay. Yeah, I was I was very nearsighted. Okay, B squad lead, yes, also near. Okay, so nearsighted is when I can't see far. I don't know why. It's one of those things I I never learned correctly, and 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 it just won't stay in my head. And yes, the mosquito lasers are also cool. The Lux talks. Okay, nearsightedness myopia is a common vision condition in which you can see objects near to you clearly, near to you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I already like just moving his eyes down. That 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 is doing so much for that perspective already. <laughs> sight sight is sight is pretty good, <laughs> pretty important for graphic designer, I would say. But you're saying from real read signs from far away. But yeah, I got the lasers in my eyes a few years ago, and I've got better than 2020 vision now. I got the Lays the Lazek. L A S E K. Not the Lazik, which is L A S I K. I got the Lazek. Which is the one where they they um they use uh, <coughs> a mild acid to to take away a few nanometers of your cornea, um, which heals back completely. But they take a few nanometers off of your cornea. Uh, and then they do the lasers, and then they, that, that layer, a fine layer, um, heals back. And so they, that, they don't cut a flap and then put the flap back down and let it reattach. Apparently it has fewer complications, but it requires, it's a bit trickier for the surgeon to perform. If we need Julius to shoot lasers from their eyes, maybe, maybe, maybe one day. Oh, mouse means you got LASIK done? It's so good, isn't it? Okay, think of it from the perspective of the observer, Pascal LaRue says. If you can see things near clearly, it's nearsighted. If you can see things far away, far sighted. In, event, in any event, you got your eyes lasered and now they're just sighted. I'm, yeah, I'm sighted. Oh, Bumblebee bad. I did not watch the videos. Um, but yeah, apparently, so the recovery is it takes a little bit longer. Um, although you can see clearly immediately after the lasers have done their thing, but um, the recovery is a little bit longer than with LASIK with the flap. But the 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 risk of complications like halos and other things are is less. Is what I was told. Are you gonna work? I've heard that theory, Blaholson, about working those muscles um, <laughs> to improve eyesight. Oh yeah, mouse mist. You can definitely smell your eyes burning, which I hope doesn't put anybody off. 
yeah yeah don't let that put you off if you, if, if you know a little bit of eyeball cooking smell it's kind of like burning hair it's not a big deal but it's really weird to feel um, someone like squeegeeing your eye off, uh, eye and I remember him saying okay we're gonna put the acid on for 13 seconds and then we're gonna wash it off or whatever that's a little unsettling but you got to just trust the guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can smell it. It's it's not a big deal. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> B squad leader, you were hoping that your burning eyes would smell like bacon. <laughs> but yeah, it smells like burning hair. I guess because um I don't know why. I guess it's the same type of material. I don't know. Oh, Grinislav, you'd like to get LASIK someday, though your your eyesight isn't that bad. I had um one of my eyes was minus five point two five and the other one was minus less than that. One of them was way worse than the other one, which is kind of a bummer when you get glasses. But it's all good now. Although I will say the only side effect I did have, and I still have to this day, is my eyes are a little bit drier in the morning than they, than they used to be. And when I first got them done, they they felt really dry in in the mornings and stuff. But I don't, it's not like I need to use um, like moisturizing eye drops every day or anything. So that's good. It's not, it's not, it's not too much of an annoyance. Minus two is pretty mild B squad, B squad leader. So that's good. <laughs> You've lost track and the train, <laughs> lost train dude. The many degrees of myopia per eye. I can't remember what I had now. I think when mine was, yeah, one was minus five something. One was minus two something or one something. Oh no, for all you're so too bad to get the surgery. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, mouse mist. If you have dry, so you did get the dry eye thing too. Did that get better over time? Yeah, Dave, what, you've heard that a lot about the dry eyes and the laser surgery, and they never say that either. They never, they never tell you that that's a that's a possible side effect. But from the people I've talked to, that's what they've said. So if you kind of suffer from dry eyes already, maybe maybe don't consider it as much. Does crying help dry eyes? <laughs> Be squat leader. Um, I think for a little bit, maybe. <laughs> they might for a little bit. Uh. Oh, Blah Holtz and your sister got her eyes laser too. Oh good, yeah, Masmus, I do find slowly over time, it's been about three years, three and a half years, I think, since I got them done. And yes, yeah, slowly it gets better. And and you know it was it was so worth it to me. Lasers lasers are the best. I'm a big fan. Yep, they have, yes, they, they're called, um, the, those lubricating eye drops are called artificial tears. <laughs> yes, an adventure game inventory item. That's what they do sound like. <laughs> Freaking laser beams. Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm really getting pleased with how this guy's head is turning out. Excellent. Yep, 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 yep. And also, I was told after the getting the lasers done um, to take omega-3 and um, vitamin C for six months after, which I did. Adventurer's Tears. <laughs> Uh, Mouse Miss, did they tell you to take any type of like supplement or anything post post laser? 
This game is not Monkey Island enough. <laughs> Eat lemon salmon every day. Salmon does have a lot of omega-3. That is true. Oh, you take a lot of omega-3 anyway. I, th I, I think omega-3 is one of the few supplements that is recommended by legitimate science to take on a daily basis. Even more so than a vitamin. Apparently. And also, of course, if you live in a climate that doesn't get a lot of sun, vitamin D is, is a must. What about night, uh, night vision? My night vision is totally fine, Mouse Miss. I can see fine in low light, etc. What, what have your, been your experiences with it? Mine is only slightly dry eyes in the morning. Oh, Cosmic Void 3. Inst interesting. Cosm uh, vi vitamin D is necessary even in sun-washed countries such as yours. Okay, so everyone should be taking Omega-3 and Vitamin D. That's what, If you're going to get anything, take anything away from the stream, that's what I want you to know. No halos um, with bright lights at night. No, I don't get any halos, Massimus. Oh, he should have done the acid. Well, who knows? Like that could always clear up too, um, Rasmus. The um, did did they give you the option of acid? It almost sounds like um, just the worst questions you you could be asked by an eye doctor. Would you like us to cut your eyes open, um, or would you like us to burn them with acid? Yeah, and staring at screens all day is is not the best for eye health either, for sure. I'm guilty of- I'm, I'm definitely one of those people who doesn't take enough breaks. I'm sitting for too long and staring at screens for too long. Both of those things are very bad. So yes, I recommend everyone please get up, move around. Look at other things. Focus in the distance. Sometimes. Hmm. I'm asking if they didn't give that to you as an option. And Blauholson has a standing desk. Very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too, Dave. Or I take breaks and look at my phone. <laughs> oh, and your computer's between two windows. Very good. Yeah, there's LASIK. L-A-S-I-K. LASIK. L-A-S-E-K. And they've got the other, the radio, whatever one that one's called. That's the, with the actual, um scalpel that they'll use to cut into the cornea, but that's a really old one. I don't think they do that much anymore. Oh, this doctor wanted to approach your eye with a needle-like thing to measure to measure inner eye pressure? Cosmic Void 3? I've never heard of that one. I've had my inner my, my eye pressure... Well, inner eye pressure. Maybe it's different from other eye pressure. Whoa, freaky. I've never had anyone try to stick a needle in my eye to check pressure. Yeah, I thought they. Yeah, I thought the Blaholtson is. Yeah, what he's uh, what Blaholtson is saying. They blow air into the eye. They do that puff of air in your eye to check air pressure. I thought. And but is there another one? Yikes. Yeah, I've had that one done. Then there's a field of vision one where the lights pop up, and then you're supposed to press the button when you see a light pop up. That's another <laughs> one of the many eye tests you can enjoy. Oh, two will look like a needle. Yeah, I'm both, and yes, I'm also great at flinching, in anticipation of the of the uh, of the uh, uh, the puff of air in the eye, and also when you have dry eyes like we have, like Mousemus and I have now, doing the puff of air eye test is also pretty difficult because they ask you to keep your eyes open, and you think I can't, my eye is gonna dry up completely. Yeah, and all of a sudden they seem to get way drier when someone is asking you to to open them for longer. Oh, Lost Train Dude, you can't wear contact lenses either. I wore them sometimes. I wore them um, for when I was playing soccer and stuff like that. But apparently um, it's not recommended that you wear them as much as, nearly as much as people do end up wearing them. Because people wear them all day every day. Some people even sleep in them. And apparently it's not good for overall eye health to, to do that.
Yeah, post post laser surgery, you you will have to use eye drops, like some kind of there's an antibiotic one that you need to use, and another one. So that that's definitely something to consider. Yeah, Pascal LaRue, yeah, damage to the corneas with um, with any type of contact lens, that it can happen. It's particularly with non-disposables. <laughs> yes, last train, dude, the problem you had was your eyes act all super scared when something approaches them. Yes, definitely. That's d that's something that is difficult to, to get over, and sometimes it's almost impossible to get over it. Yeah, because when I first started wearing contact lenses for soccer, it was it's very hard to train yourself. To not flinch when even if it's your own finger is approaching your eye. <laughs> yes, B squad later. If the pressure in your eye gets too high, you can go blind. It's called glaucoma. It's bad. You'll never see it coming. It's true. Yeah, um, glaucoma is a, is a real real problem. But apparently, it's very treatable if you catch it early. Yes, clogged eyelid glands. That's that's something that people don't actually know exist. Um, there's 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 eyelid moisture glands that run vertically across your entire eyelid, and sometimes when you get I don't know sometimes anyone gets those weird little bumps right on the waterline, that that can be a clogged gland. Oh, Pascal Haru, you're fearful of soccer balls. Those things hurt. Yes, I've had soccer balls in the face, and and it's not fun at all. Although, I've never really bro I've never broken my nose from it, but and, and I've gotten hit, hit pretty hard. Michael Darkwolf, thanks for the raid. That's amazing. Thank you so much. You yeah, were just talking about getting hit in the face with a soccer ball, and it does. It's not pleasant, but I, I and I think I've even had nosebleeds from it. But I don't think I've never had my nose broken from it. No, you see stars when you sneeze, like the cartoons, the logs talks. Sometimes they get that weird star effect too. For almost no reason, it seems. Yes, yeah, so welcome, Party of Five. I, I Pascal, I remember Party of Five, but I never watched it. <laughs> you hated. You've always hated ball sports and sports in general. Blah Holson. <laughs> and all athletics. <laughs> I I don't enjoy watching sports, but um, I I like playing sports a lot. And uh, currently, the, you know, there's nothing like that happening right now, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry to hear it, Michael Darkwolf. I hope you're feeling better. And thanks, absolutely, thanks for the raid. That's awesome. Yeah, we're just doing a bit of art today. Super casual. Yeah, yeah, I've never... Because I, I used to watch a little bit of Premier League soccer, and I was thinking, this is, I, this is involuntary. This is stress that I don't need in my life, and I can just cut it out completely, and I, so I did. Oh, well, take care and don't rush yourself in getting better. Michael Darkwolf. Yes, you don't mind moving around. We'll hold some, but they make these dumb games around it. What kind of, so what kind of activities do you enjoy then? Because there's plenty of non-team related ways to move around, for sure. I, I, quite I quite like jogging, for instance. That's a nice way to move around that doesn't require anybody else. Yeah, I'm really I'm pleased with how that guy's turning out now. Although the light on his his beard is not trans is not reading well right now. <laughs> Jogging is fine. Ah, are you streaming Donkey Kong sixty four, Michael Dark Darkwolf? Nice. Jogging is fine and dancing is also fine. <laughs> Blah Holton. Yeah, there's plenty of like activities or ways to just move, get, be active that don't require any of that other stuff for sure. Oh, oh, Canada. <laughs> yes, going on four flights of stairs with heavy groceries. The uh, the other day, um, a couple weeks ago, I was buying. Um, bags of rice. 
I was buying two 15 pound bags of rice among other groceries. And the place that I went to, they still require the, the loony, the dollar coin to get the, to get the cart and I didn't have one. So I ended up walking through the, through the parking lot with two 15 pound bags of rice over one shoulder and all the rest of the groceries over the other shoulder to go to get to the car. That was heavy. Please, <laughs> please stand for the national anthem. I'm so sorry, I didn't stand. Uh, does his head, his head needs more shininess? Maybe. Just maybe he's, he needs a little bit more in there. <laughs> <laughs> B-Squad leader says you shouldn't have to explain what a loony is. For the benefit of our non-Canadian audience, a loony, a loony is what we call our dollar coins. And the toonie is what we call the... And I know I say the to I say ooh sounds like a Canadian. I, I noticed that listening back to, to these when I say Happy Crimson Couture's Day. It sounds very Canadian. Just like when I'm saying stuff like um, diamonds originate from the upper mantle of the earth, which is 100 miles or around 160 kilometers. I try to do imperial and uh, metric measures. Oh, Michael Darkwolf, if you like Weird Al, Weird Al just did a lovely podcast episode on Conan O'Brien's podcast called Conan Needs a Friend, and it was wonderful. He's genuinely a lovely, funny guy, Weird Al. <laughs> Deluxe Tuck says, overall, I don't have much of an accent, but every once in a while it comes out. So it comes out in the Crimson Katoos Day, I understand that. I could probably step on it less. Crimson Katoos Day. Crimson Katoos Day. Yeah, you get the loony back, but I just didn't have mine because um, I would go to Supercenter and Supercenter would, you would need, you would need a quarter or a loony or something. Um, but because of, I think, COVID, they were not doing that anymore. And so when I went to another grocery store that did have a loony still for the cart, I just didn't have the loony I always use. Because it's always the one loony I'd always use. Ah, he was on Gilbert Gottfried's podcast as well, 11043. He's just naturally really funny. Naturally. See, I see naturally sometimes too. Naturally. Naturally. What? Pascal LaRue, you wash your rice with vinegar? You add a little bit to a pot with rice and water, but f five to ten minutes, you agitate the rice. Add water and let the sediment go over the side. Turns out it's good if you soak it for the recommended 20. You use best basmati. I I never wrote, soaked my my rice for more than ten minutes with a little bit of vinegar. Interesting. <laughs> Eating with you want to hear weird all in Conan the Barbarian's podcast. Yeah, Conan O'Brien has a really cute podcast where he gets you know he he just had one. He talked to Cecily Strong from Saturday Night Live and that was lovely too. But the weird the weird all one was was a standout for me. It was a lot of fun. Okay, um, why don't we move into a bit of dithering? Because this black gray um, thing, it just doesn't look appropriate anymore. I'm going to dither that back, I think. We're going to start doing some of that. Because before I had it as this color, we're going to make a different dither pass with, um, with the, the blue. Yeah, I like that better already. Great. Oh, you can't go to his concerts, Michael Darkwolf? Yeah, I, I don't go to a lot of concerts myself either. Because they are pretty loud. And even before COVID, I was not into crowds. So I, I didn't go to very many concerts either.
Oh, Edmund Detour! Good to see you! Welcome back to stream! Yeah, we're just doing a little bit of, um... of game art stuff. And I did a talk, a rock talk on diamonds. And I showed my diamond necklace off, which... is the extent of my, um... Diamond. Well, I have got a diamond foot file, and I've got a um. <laughs> a uh, diamond necklace I made with little chip diamonds. I say natu naturally, naturally. Yeah, um, Deluxe Talks, I don't listen to as many podcasts as I, use, as I used to, really. I've just been listening to um, Conan's podcast, if it's a guest I think I'd be interested in. It's called Conan Needs a Friend. Um, I'll listen to Mark Marin's podcast, WTF, if it's if it's a guest I'm interested in as well. Um, I listen to uh, one called Film Umentaries, and uh, this guy Jamie Benning, he does, he interviews um, film people from the industry that don't get really interviewed very much. That one's really good. The people behind, you know, a lot of the big movies like Star Wars and everything, but the ones that were like the second unit director or, or things that... Um, are not as well known. It's really cool to hear their perspectives on things. I also listen to 1900 Hot Dog, which is um, the 1900 Hot Dog Humor Sites uh, podcast, which is really good. Yeah, and B Squad Leader, you're right. The Canadian accent is different all over the country. And Hungry Goria is a, is a streamer, a really great streamer who's from Canada. And I can hear it in her voice too, um, a little bit of Canadian. <laughs> I feel like the water is too bright now. So we got to do something about that too. I'm not sure. Yes, Filming Mentries is great, Jim Matt. They have a, it's great to hear from the people who are on the ground and have all that experience. You know, when people talk about, you know, Star Wars, they talk about George Lucas, George Lucas, but there's so many other amazingly talented people that 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 worked on those things that are in every book and, and behind the scenes and everything like that. And uh, it's good to hear their stories because we don't hear them so much. You found a diamond at your local park, Edmund Detour? You have to figure out if it's real. Oh yeah, Eden, Eden with I also have the anxiety of finding parking. And yeah, so I, I totally get that. Absolutely. Yeah, the water is too bright. Yes, Mega DJ Mega Hammer is Canadian. He also he also does streams. I want to try the Dark Scion Cosmic Void 3, but then the 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 um the grass will disappear. The letter Yeah, <laughs> you know, wait, the, the Eastern Canada almost sounds like, I, I, I think you made gar Gaelic type accent, not garlic, um, I think. Yeah, I'm, I want to use dark science, so why don't we explore that a little bit? I want to know what a garlic type of accent is. <laughs> Garlic works better. All oh, 32 bit kid, thanks for gifting a, a, a sub. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Oh, cool. Deluxe Tux. A great podcast along those lines was called I Was There Too, which interviewed unknown actors who played small but memorable parts in big films. That sounds cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that one down. Yeah, I need to 
figure out a way to different you know what could be done what if I do just a bit of like rim lit grass over here would that just look terrible why don't we find out I'm gonna write that down though that sounds amazing As soon as there are moon reflections, you think that'll look like water? The water should be darker though. No? It's too light. It's too light. We'll see. I was there too. To podcast. Oh, weird, Pascal LaRue. You've heard something about pink and red diamonds? They have quantum properties that can be used like a GPS, only it works off the magnetosphere because it's unique enough to give an accurate location of where you are on Earth. No, I've never read that before. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. The garlic accent. Oh, Dave, well, thanks for the subscription. I appreciate it. I also love garlic. Garlic is almost an accent when, you, when you've eaten it. <laughs> There's an episode that interviewed the people who played the passengers on the bus in the film Speed on I Was There Too podcast. That's amazing. Yeah, please, Pascal LaRue, please. That, that's a great, that'd be a great thing to learn about. The magnetosphere GPS. Yeah, Dave, I don't know how any of this works, I'm afraid. I don't know what this, where the sub badges are, or how that works. Okay. I'm going to try to, yeah, I'm going to try to just paint in some, a suggestion of grass, but this probably won't work, right? This probably won't work. No, that won't work. It won't. Maybe I will try just putting the reflections on there. We'll see where that takes us. Oh, there you go. Dave Boy got the sub badge. Yes, I think that movie was called The Bus That Couldn't Slow Down. And speaking of, does anyone know what season of The Simpsons we're on now? I couldn't even hazard a guess. Is it season like 30, 35 or 40 or something? What's the vague pitch for different sub badges? I have no idea. Season 106. Anna, good to see you, Anna CGG. Anna CGG was my first guest on stream, which was awesome. She's the co host of the Classic Gamers Guild podcast. This is clearly not, it won't be white. Thirty-two. Season thirty-two. Maybe <laughs> you Google the Beast Squad leader? I appreciate that. Thank you. Thirty-two. And how many episodes have there been? How many episodes? It's, um, five hundred, maybe? If I had to guess five hundred episodes? You love the dithered far bank? Cause I just, yeah, I decided to dither those back because the gray just, yeah, was not working. Um, but you want to put, we want to put the moon in here. Oh no, don't make me put a moon back here. This is um, a famous National Film Board of Canada piece that gets done. Um, this song. That I won't even try to sing. Oh my goodness. 703 episodes of The Simpsons, Beast Squad Leader. Yeah, Edmund Detour, yeah, I only tell myself there's about five seasons of The Simpsons. You say nine? You know, Dithered would be long and wiggly. Yeah, probably. I, would it be... It wouldn't be angled then, would it? It would just... Okay. I, I, I'm not good with light and shadow. 
Oops. Wow, KQ, King's Quest 4 was around The Simpsons when the first Simpsons came out? Yeah, Pascal Lure, I was gonna make the water be fairly calm. <clears throat> You're waiting for Simpsons and Crimson Diamond crossover memes, Anna CGG? I don't I don't think that's gonna happen. We're gonna do this. Dave Force says, the thing about mom moon reflections, every crest has some vertical angle that reflects the, reflects the moon. Oh, just the moon. Okay. Is that another um, autocorrect? Is that like the, the garlic accent? I mean, you know what I need to do? Okay, I know what I need to do. I know I know what, what this requires. This requires some fake some fake distance. I think. Does that not do? Okay, that does. Okay. This is gonna look terrible. Oh no, stripes aren't going to work. Dither it, just dither it? What if I just dither it? Okay, that's not bad. <clears throat> The fireflies would be cute. That is true, Michael Dark Wolf. This this could potentially work a little bit um, with the moon. Put the stars in there too. I don't want to put all the stars in there, guys. But I will put I will put some of these lines in I think. I actually think they have to be vertical though. I don't know. It's not working either. Hmm. Stone stars don't usually reflect in the water? Okay, that's good. Good. Oh, Dave, where you hope to one day make color cycled water that looks as good as Mark Ferrari's? Hmm. Hmm. I want to have some indication. Of vertical line. I, why is that? They don't all have to be perfectly vertical, right? Okay, can you just... Can't I just do this? Even if they're not straight? 
<clears throat> yes, we, I think we all do wish one day that if one day if we're very, very good, we could one day be as good as Mark Ferrari. Put those lines in the mirror. Oh yeah, the, I guess we have to do the mirrored mountains, don't we? You know what? What if we just do the mirrored shape of the mountains first? Why don't we do that first? Okay. Right. Let's see what, it, what this would look like. <clears throat> this is where we start experimenting. This might, this might be the start of something, <clears throat> but the problem is... Oh, Lost Train Dude. Super late for you. Have a, thank you for dropping by and staying up. Have a great night. This, yeah, this could end up being good, but I need to maybe... This is where we just start fiddling. We'll figure something out. Oh, Flukas! Hello, hello! Howdy! Welcome back! Yeah, have a great night, Lost Train Dude! Yeah, we might be finding something here. And then maybe some of those water lines that I liked so much. It's not bad, but there has to be some differentiation. Oh, thank you, Flukas. You're saying I, I, I've made progress. <clears throat> yeah, some, this, this, there's some progress happening here. But I really need something to differentiate the water from from the not water. 
Maybe you break the dithering powder up, up a little bit. You don't like how the moon sits above? Wouldn't it, though? The moon wouldn't sit above the mountain reflection? Oh, Flucas, have I gotten accustomed to the newer Adobe Creative Cloud? In some ways I have, in some ways I haven't. Um, for, the, for instance, the... the, the um, I, don't, I still don't like how... Um, well, whatever I just did there, I don't like. But moving the um, canvas around, it does a weird, like, drift. This... When I start moving it, but then I stop, it just drifts. I... I don't like that. So that's weird. Because, yeah, wouldn't the moon be above the moon? I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, Anna, are you just leaving the shop? Oh, good. Yeah, have a great night, Anna. Maybe we'll see you on in a bit. Is when the jaws open wide and there are more jaws inside that some more, eh? The blood holes and you think there's a setting for that so it doesn't skid around like this? Skate? I don't know why they would even do that. Hand tool. Scroll all windows. Oh! Oh, look at that! Yeah, you're right. That did it. I don't know why it's called scroll all windows, but hey. Nice, that doesn't do that anymore. Sweet. What a weird setting for that to be default as. Okay, so we need a poll. <laughs> would the mountain be... Th would the mountain shadow obscure the moon, or would it not? It wouldn't, would it? It's above. I don't know. We should just take the moon out of this completely. It wouldn't obscure it. Oh, but they wouldn't intercept. I get what you're saying, Harper Class. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, okay. We can move that. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yes, you're right. Everyone's right. You're all right. Oh my gosh. It's embarrassing. See, and it can be obscured by the. It can be obscured by, um, we're going to obscure it a little by the grass here. That's going to be fine. You're right. You're so right. Okay. Yeah. Cut a bit of the moon off. But I still want to do something about the way that this is blending with that. Do I need that bit of light above again? Using the light cyan. The joy the joy of EGA, right? You gotta figure it out. <laughs> the moon reflecting off his head. Black straw along the shore. You know what I can do? That's not bad. That's actually not bad. Um, what I'm going to do is, yeah, I might do some, like, cattails or something, or something to help with this. Why don't we try that? We'll try that. Something has to be done. You can't continue this way. Wow, it's 10.13? The time has gone by. Wow, I'm surprised. Yeah, we'll go to, to 10.30 as usual. We've got to find someone to raid. Wow. Time, time flies when you're having fun, I guess. He's glow one. Add the eyes and nose to the moon. Okay, let's let's try some cattails, you guys. Because we know we need something to separate this bank from the rest of it. Ooh, I think that could work. I think that could work. But we need to put it above the dithering. That This might do the trick, you guys. 
right? This is encouraging. And we'll figure something, and then there'll be some denser bits in, down here. And I'll, I'll clean this up later. And we'll make some come forward over here. Maybe we can cover the where the moon would be and solve two problems at once. I think there are cattails in Northern Ontario. Yes, yes, talking diamonds and pushing pixels is is a very pleasant way to pass the time. And the company also helps, you know? Good company. That that's working for me. Yeah, we can do we can just we can maybe yeah, I think a, a stone or two to break some of this up would be nice. Um, but let's continue with this a little bit and uh, just get some of this more of this in. Um, and then we can add some, maybe some stones, things like that. Yes, it does give it scale, be squad leader, you're right. I'm glad we all had this talk. Yes, the crowd is the best part. Yeah, you guys are the best. I don't say that enough. The chat here is amazing. It's been a real nice thing to do and pass time and socialize during these COVID times. <laughs> Cattails are coming along rather quickly. Yeah, well, you know, it's at this, at this resolution, we can, we can get things done. We can just, you know. So yeah, we can definitely, um, you know, have some other stuff happening. But let's do that on a separate layer, just in case we don't like it. Uh, are the fire reflections on the stones they look off i um yeah we could definitely revisit that we can definitely re revisit everything uh but do i even want to extend them here extend extend some extend some and then we can put some rocks or something in places you know Oh, Michael Darfolf, that's very nice of you to say. You share, share my passion for pixel art and for adventure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's good times. Let's put a rock here. Excellent. Um, oops. In fact, This is Red River Valley, I believe the song is. <laughs> yeah, I'm really enjoying the, the cattails. Good suggestion, everybody.
I'm feeling pretty good. I do want to make this look less, like break up this flat shape that's happening here still. Um, but we are, we're well on our way. And it is helping us, oh, you know what? That's excellent. Very good. Yes, 32-bit kit. It, it has a lot of depth. Um, and I'm wondering what else in terms of features. <laughs> we need a tree stump for the beavers to have not on. So next week, pending pending Dan, like I said, should be a music stream, which if any of you haven't seen, it's a real treat, because Dan will show off stuff from his collection, and um, he'll compose a piece of music from the ground up, which is amazingly entertaining and educational to see. And any type of music questions you have, game questions, Dan is the one to ask. All I have to do is figure out what we're gonna what 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 we're gonna do. Yeah, I know Cosmic Void Three. That's always a thing. Is when we finish these things and realize it's only gonna be for three or four frames of animation. We just just want to use it again and again. But, you know, doing this has been great because it's been educational to do it and also entertaining. But yes, next week music stream hopefully. Um, and then, you know, we're just going to go back to a, hopefully a sort of a regular schedule like usual with this stuff. And now the, now the um, <laughs> we can wave away. Um, what's happening with the moon it kind of there's a suggestion but we don't need it too much and we're getting a bit of that water look and a bit of stones and texture maybe maybe get in there with just some hand dithering here just to give it a little bit more texture you know Ooh, you you did an animation, Michael Dark Wolf stream. Nice. I haven't really done any animating stream stuff um, when I'm streaming, but I probably will for this. Just the four the four frames we're going to be doing of it. We will eventually get to that at some point. Here, Blue Hudson, you find it cozy. It's it's definitely getting more texture, which is nice. Makes such a big difference, doesn't it? Very pleased. Excellent. Okay. Just to fix some of this dithering. Oh, of course, speaking of podcasts, I do listen to the Classic Gamers Guild podcast. They just did an episode on Dagraf Amon Ra, which is really good to listen to. Anna and Paul discussed it. It's a lot of fun to listen to them. And a real walk down memory lane. And I learned a few things about Degafon Ra that I didn't know. 
to. Some of this accidental dithering that got put up, I actually kind of like. Like the stuff that's over here is adding more depth and I kind of want to go back in here and put some of that in too. Um, although this layer is above that layer. I see. A bit of dithering in there is just, just nice. It adds a bit of um, texture to. Okay, perfect. Oh, well, Michael Dalcroft, if you're if you're a noob with animation, don't worry about that. I mean, we, so there's so much that's self-taught with this, and and Francisco is also very much self-taught in all his art and animation and everything. Um, <laughs> v squad he's gonna run out of um run out of wood for the fire it's he well he's only gonna be here for four frames of animation so I'm not that concerned ooh very Bob Ross nice <laughs> gray rim, lim, rim light on the hills now that is otherwise dithered we can try it absolutely I'm open to trying that let's do a copy of this just so we I want to see what that looks like. Rim light, gray. Hmm. Adds a nice volume, doesn't it? If we wanted to really get fancy, we would start like working into this and carving some some shapes out and stuff. Something to think about, you know. Wonderful. You guys are wonderful. Thank you so much. We are going to um, take a look. Hold on. I know I'm a... <laughs> Give me a second. Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh no. Okay. <laughs> I I did something to my, my Photoshop where now I don't have the menu bar anymore and I can't find it. Oh, but it's fine now. You're happy to see the stars between the trees. Oh, look, someone's got a <laughs> deluxe tusk. Actually, has a Bob Ross emoji. Sweet. We're gonna find. Um, we're gonna find someone to raid, you guys. It's that time again. Okay. What do we have first? We're gonna search if anyone is streaming the Crimson Diamond. Live channels, no. The Crimson Diamond. No channels found. Okay. Amberzine, thank you so much for being so supportive of the stream and coming here when you can. That's awesome. I really appreciate it. Cosmic Board 3, always, always good to see you. It's always a pleasure. Evil Tentacle, good night. Thank you so much. Hey, I'm going to try to find something, some somebody to raid. So if anyone has any suggestions of anyone who's on that they'd like to raid... Um, what do I have here? Oh, Taco Ven Adventure is playing Monkey Island 2. Hi, Jim Matt. Happy, hey, happy Crimson Tuesday evening. Thank you for dropping in. I really appreciate it. Uh, Shift F to get the menu bar back. You squad leader, thank you. I will write that down because I will do that. Thank you. Because I must have inadvertently have pressed it. Shift plus F to get menu 
bar back. Ronald Dragster, thank you, Eden Waith. Always a pleasure. Yeah, let's uh, let's keep going here. What, what else do we have? Um, the Renaissance is playing retro, but it doesn't say what he's playing. Because I'm the jump king of wishful thinking. I don't know what that means. Taco sounds good. The mouse miss? Okay. Let's raid Ta Taco Venture. Um, who is playing Monkey Island 2, LeChuck's Revenge. Which is quite a good one. Bumblebee Bat, thank you so much for being in chat tonight. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, so our raid message is going to be... Um, yeah, see you soon, Bumblebee Bat. Raid message will be... Our... Crimson Diamond Raiders. Oh, Michael Darfwolf, thank you, and thank you for coming by, and I'm glad you're feeling better. Crimson Diamond Raiders are coming aboard. Oh, no. Autocorrect. I don't want that to be right. I want that to be wrong. No, stop it. Stop it now. Coming aboard. Okay, so here is... Here's our raid message. Our Crimson Diamond Raiders are coming aboard. That, that'll be that. So let's set this up. Thank you so much again, everybody. See you hopefully next week. And we're going to hopefully do some music. <laughs> raid. Taco Adventure. Taco Adventure. Take care, Blah Holtzin. Good to see you, as always. Let us get this on. <laughs> Thank you for all the help, too, by the way. I really appreciate every little bit of it. It's so helpful. I don't know if I would have thought of, um, of them cattails. That really helps a lot. Arr. Arr. Okay. All right. That's a good number of people. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna raid now. Have a wonderful night. See you hopefully next week, and have a great rest rest of your week. Happy Crimson Tuesday. Raiden. <laughs>